every book says something about your relationship with the person. Mm. So when you give somebody a book called The Book of Awesome, you're saying, you're awesome. Mm. That's why so many people bought this book for their teacher, mm. okay? You are a badass. I mentioned it earlier. You were literally declaring that person to be a badass. Right. Here's the mistake I made. This is called the happiness equation. As I started to sign books for it, we haven't talked about signing. No, it's yet. just a mistake, but it's also sold a couple hundred thousand, right? So yeah. So it, but, mistake in air quotes. Okay. okay. Yes. But here's the mistake: is that <laughs> yeah. is that people in lineup would say, "Oh, I want." I was like, "Oh, should I make it out to you or, or your your husband or wife?" And they'd be like, "Oh, make it out to my husband." Oh, wait a minute. I can't make it out to him. He's gonna think that I think he's not happy. Hmm. If I give you a book called The Happiest Equation, I'm declaring you to be unhappy. Right. If you were happy, you wouldn't need the book to fill you up. All right, welcome back to our 10-part series on how to sell a million plus books with Neil Pasricha. This is episode five. We're talking about how to find the perfect title for your book. So what do you got, man? <laughs> Okay, finding the perfect title, that's a hard question because here's the thing. We've talked about it a couple times already, but people are too busy, they don't have time, they don't have attention. If you think about a book in funnel marketing terms, the number of people who enter the funnel of looking at your cover mm -hmm. is much higher than the number of people who buy and read your book. Mm. So you're trying to convert, I'm, I'm using words that I don't really know myself, but like you're trying to convert book lookers <laughs> right. into book readers, right? And the only way to do that is to have your title and your cover be captivating and interesting and mm. provocative and capturable enough that you're like, what is this, mm. right? How many books, when you walk into a bookstore, if you walk into a big bookstore, you're probably walking by, just argue, for argument's sake, 10 or 20,000 books. Okay. You might pick up five. You might buy one. Mm. So I'm just showing you, there's the, there's the little funnel there, like 10,000 covers, five you pick up that you maybe do the flip test or you read a few pages or you read the back, you check a blurb, and then maybe one that you buy. And if it's in the bookstore, it's already the 10,000 most popular well, that's, books. That's the other thing, right? right. Like Amazon's got 100 million books on right. it. So we're talking about a book, so it's already trying, trying to curate it. If you're at, a, if you're at the uh, airport bookstore, you might look at all the book covers, but they only have 50 book covers. Right. So you pick the one that you might take on your plane if you even buy one at all. You might just get jujubes and keep going. So there's three principles that you need to follow Okay. I think of your cover. And I notice that most books break these and they don't sell. Okay. So I do believe in these. I didn't learn what these were and I've made mistakes I'm gonna show you. Okay. Uh, one, I had made a huge error on this one which I'm about to tell you about. Okay. And knock over all my dominoes. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, let's start with this one. Yeah. Uh, the first principle is Ownable. 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 You know this. This is you. Believe. Believe. Yeah. You have one word. Yeah. You live by it. You swear by it. You own it. When I think believe, I think Evan Carmichael. Um, and certainly, second most importantly, I don't think of anyone else. Okay, great. Okay? Right? I, I mean, I, off the top of my head, I'm like, believe? That's you. Right? That's in my head. Yeah. You own that word. Cool. Awesome is ownable. What does ownable mean? It means no one else is using it, right. or uh, if they are using it, they, you are gonna use it bigger than them, okay? So like Jen Sincero wrote a book called You Are a Badass. Okay. That book has sold millions of copies. She owns the word badass. Mm. Mark Manson wrote a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It was one of the first books ever to use the F word right in the title. I'd say arguably he owns that word. He owns word. the F word. He owns the F word. <laughs> Because who else has the F word? Right. And no wonder his sequel is called Everything is F'd. Right. Because he owns the F word. And if the first thing is it has to be ownable. Um, one word? It has a to be. A sentence? What? Well, like, what? well it, it could be a word. It could be a color scheme. Mm. It could be a branding. Here's the thing. Malcolm Gladwell, I would say, he owns the white book cover with the small icon in the center. Okay. The tipping point has the match. Mm. You know, Outliers has the little beads. Right, uh, Blink, I can't remember what the picture's of, but he owns the white, you could, if you think white book jacket with a small like yeah. prescient, like little impactful little icon, that's Malcolm Gladwell. Of course many people will try to copy it, but because he was the first, because he is the biggest, he owns it. Right. I would argue that Mitch Album 
owns the small, tiny, packaged little book, mm. Tuesdays with Maury, Five People You Meet in Heaven, uh, you know, these books with like kind of like a little gold or, or uh, embossed navy blue or maroon. You can kind of picture it. And all those books look that way. Chicken Soup for the Soul. Sold millions of copies. You can picture them. White. Chicken Soup. That's a phrase they can own. Yeah. No other book has that. That red cursive font. Ownable. And if you're a new author or first time author, this is even more important because you got to stick out in the cluttered marketplace. Find a word no one else is using. Hmm. Find a phrase no one else is using. Find a color no one else is using. Find a size no one else is using. Right? I can grab some, some examples like, like here's one. Uh, coaching habit, okay? Uh, ownable. Who else is, when you think coaching, this guy's on his way to selling a million books, this is what you're gonna think to. You can't think of many books off the top of your head that have that word, so you can therefore own it. Hmm. It can be a space that you can play in. Awesome is ownable, hence, awesome is everywhere. I have a couple sequels that you don't have here. Yeah. And You Are Awesome is the new book. Because I found the word I own. Yeah. And by the way, interestingly enough, I've been talking for a few years about um, intentional living. I thought my writing was all about gratitude. Then I thought it was about happiness and gratitude. Now I think it's about intentional living. So the subtitle of this new book is Nine Secrets to Getting Stronger and Living an Intentional Life. Hmm. This is my attempt to try to own a new phrase. Hmm. And if it works, and if we like it, and people resonate with it, and they're starting to see a reaction to it, that's what I'm thinking I'm, I'm writing underneath. Now on the next book, or the next book, I can, I can call that book maybe, um, not, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's fine, I don't, it's fine, but like I can use that phrase a little bit bigger. Right. Okay? Yeah. Okay, can I tell you about a mistake I made? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there's no awesome here. Okay, so you could argue that that's a mistake right off the bat, you know, that's my, for, we were trying to, change the positioning, have him be more authoritative. You know, the picture of me here is like, I'm wearing a suit in this one. Like, okay, okay it's a little different. And this picture doesn't have a picture. The second principle though, is where I made the mistake, is giftable. Hmm. Giftable. There's no exact science on this, but a very high percentage of books are purchased as gifts. Hmm. Mother's Day, mm -hmm. Father's Day, Christmas, graduation, if you think about the last five books you've purchased, I'm gonna guess two or three, if not more of them, were actually gifts for other people, mm. right? And if, you think, if I think about myself, nine out of the last 10 books I bought were gifts for other people. Because I'm always buying my wife a book, yep. or I'm buying my mom something for her birthday, or my niece is turning seven, I'm like, buy her three kids books. So giftability is critical in this industry. And especially in nonfiction, which is the area I know the best, every book says something about your relationship with the person. Hmm. So when you give somebody a book called The Book of Awesome, you're saying, you're awesome. Hmm. That's why so many people bought this book for their teacher, hmm. okay? You are a badass. I mentioned it earlier. You were literally declaring that person to be a badass. Right. Well, that's a nice thing that you want mm -hmm. from somebody. Here's the mistake I made. This is called The Happiness Equation. As I started to sign books for it, we haven't talked about signing No, it's yet. just a mistake, but it's also sold a couple hundred thousand, right? So yeah, so it, but, mistake in air quotes. There, okay, okay. Yes. but here's the mistake, is that, <laughs> yeah. is that people in lineup would say, oh, I want, I was like, oh, should I make it out to you or, or your, your husband or wife? And they'd be like, oh, I'll make it out to my husband. Oh, wait a minute. I can't make it out to him. He's gonna think that I think he's not happy. Hmm. If I give you a book called The Happiness Equation, I'm declaring you to be unhappy. Right. If you were happy, you wouldn't need the book to fill you up. Hmm. So does it pass this test of could I give it to someone and what does that say? That's a huge thing. It's a huge thing, you know, um, because a lot of books, if you have a book like with, so this book could have easily had the word anxiety in the title or resilience. Right. That's ultimately what this book is about, right? It's a, it could have been called Nine Ways to Live a Resilient Life. That's, that's nine things in it. They all teach you how to be a bit stronger. But then I thought, if I give you that book, I'm kind of declaring you to be a bit weak. Hmm. Or like, would you buy that book for your anxious or resilience needing teen? Hmm. You might not, because then it looks like a book that they be, should be reading or like you're, you're like, hey, you need help. Right. Right. So you want the gift ability to be strong. Hmm. Okay. So how would you look at my, my first book, Your One Word? Yeah. How would you? What, it's called Your One Word? It's called Your One Word. How would you? I, why did I think it was called Believe? <laughs> Does it say believe on the cover as well? No, I don't think it actually. It, like but a, your like one a, word is believe. Right, yes. So it's helping other people find 
their one word. Yeah, so it's not, it's I would think that that is not. It's not ownable, that's your one so word. That's the first thing. Yeah. And by the way, ownable is a mistake for most books. Yeah. I call this the happiness equation. Gretchen Rubin owns that word. Hmm. Happiness. The happiness project. Right. Right? So I'm entering into a market where someone else owns the word. Right. And that's not a good thing. So right. if you have a book come out that has like badass in the title, yeah. you lose right. right off the bat. So your one word, what I hear personally, and I don't mean to say this in any way negative to you, it's like great. none of those three words are ownable. Okay. Got believe that. Believe yeah. is ownable. So believe and then how would you, for the giftability part, yeah. your one word doesn't say anything. Right, so you need a subtitle or the graphic or the image has to communicate that I believe in you. How do we communicate that through your book? This is fun, we're a little like workshopping your yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can say like, it's like, um, uh, you know, something about that subtitle or that title or the graphic has to communicate that you believe in the person. Right, I believe in you by giving you the Maybe book. that's what it's called. I believe in you. Maybe. Okay. And I'm, I'm spitballing, okay, yeah. without knowing your book's content in particular in depth. Yeah. But I'm saying somehow the title has, so for example, uh, Justin Halpern uh, wrote a great book, sold a million copies, called Shit My Dad Says. Yeah. It's totally ownable. Yeah. It's based on his Twitter feed, has the S word in the title, which yeah. is ownable. No one had done that at that time. It was 10 years ago. But then his second book was called I Suck at Girls. Okay. Didn't, didn't sell too well, and I don't think Justin would mind me saying that. Uh, I know him. But he didn't use the ownability from the first one. And now, what are you saying when I give that to you? You suck at girls? Right. Like, it doesn't give you something that you can get better at. Right. The One Minute Manager, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. But if I give you seven habits of highly effective people, I'm saying you're an effective person, or you could be one. Right, aspirational. Right? One Minute Manager, I'm saying you're a good manager, or you could be one. I can see it in you. Mm -hmm. It's a gift book. I, and so many books are gifts. So, you know, just think about, think about the giftability of it. It's very important. Third piece of principle on title is searchability. Okay. Hate to get into the brass tacks of this stuff. No, but it's great. At the end of the day, people have to be able to find your book. <laughs> so, meaning when they start typing into Amazon or uh, Indigo or Barnes and Noble, or they start typing, typing into Google, or they look for it in a bookstore, they have to be able to search for it and find it. Hmm. This is why nobody can find the band named the band. Okay, right. <laughs> right? Or the the. Right. The the. That's the hard one to find now. And why the band always. Do you know the Toronto band always? No. So they spell their name A-L-V-V. -V okay. A-Y-S. Okay. It looks like a W. w. Right. But when it's A-L-V, it's they own all search. Right. It's weird to sort of back into search engine optimization on your title. I'm not saying it should be the core issue. Right. Ownable first, right. giftable second. These are priority order, but then searchable. Okay. And that's another problem with the happiness equation. Because when you go into happiness, there's too many. Hmm. It's a, it's a, there's, there's this gigantic section and they all have the word happiness in the title. Got it. And now people will call me to my face and say like, oh, I loved your book, The Happiness Project. I'm like, no, my book's The Happiness <laughs> Equation. Right, 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 right. And they're like, oh, what? I thought it was called, the just like I just did with you. Yeah. But it wasn't because of anything malicious. It yeah. was just that in their brain it got confused because I'm entering a category that I don't own. Yeah. And I'm playing a game that I can't win. It's not giftable. It's not ownable. It can't take off. Right. Yeah. That's my personal view. You're right. It's still sold a couple hundred thousand copies. So it's not that. But I think it could have been another million so, copies. So, book. okay. So play with the title on this one. Mm hmm. What should it have been to follow these rules? You know what's interesting? I wrote this book as a 300 page love letter to my unborn child on okay. how to live a happy life. Okay. I actually, part of me wanted to call this book, Dear Son, Love Dad. Okay. And uh. I thought that would be great because I think it's ownable. It sounds yeah. like a letter to your child. I think it's giftable. Because yeah. if you're a son or a dad, yeah. it's so, yeah. Dear Son, Love Dad. And it basically says what you want someone to say and I think then it might have taken off. Uh, but who's to say? That was just my other choice was dear son, love dad. Would you, would you? It really, and it literally was. And again, back to our other video, the last one, it has to be authentic to the content. Right. I couldn't have, uh, of I course, could, I couldn't have course. called it like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. climb Everest and you open it. What's right. this book about? Right. But, but, but wait, why not of, dear son, you're awesome? Sure. Okay. That might have been even better. Okay. Right? I wish I had you 
three years ago when the book came out, right? When you go soft cover. <laughs> but when I'm standing at a book table yeah. and people, I say, which one do you want to give to your spouse? They always pick, Yeah. oh, I want him to be awesome, awesome. or her to be awesome, yeah. right? And, and here it's like, oh, they might think, I'll, I'll buy this one for myself. Right. Now, most of my advice in this whole video series is about what I know, which is physical books. Right. If you're an audiobook person and you're an audiobook junkie and you've succeeded in the audiobook universe, you might totally disagree with me because you could say, that's a self fulfilling marketplace. You're buying an audiobook typically for you. It's hard to gift an audiobook. So maybe there, a book like Three Ways to Get Rid of Your Anxiety, maybe that would work. Right. So, uh, how, how do your sales break down percentage wise? I, I'm like almost all physical books. All physical? Like like 90%. Did you do the, your own audio? For I these? did my you own. Read it, you read it yourself? Yeah, I read that my own self. I read that my own self. But my books. And so part of what I'm speaking to is my own experience. Of yeah. course, that's the nature of all these videos and all your, all your channel is that yeah. you get my thing. You ask me because I sold a million books. Yeah. So I can only give you my view. But my books have sold like 90% physical books. Um, and then maybe 10% are audio and, wow. and the ebook. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how about? Good or bad. But right or wrong, there's no. There's no, 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 I love it. That's it's killed great. a lot of trees. <laughs> how about? Um, when you're going now to different languages, when you're selling, yeah. you sold a bunch of foreign rights for, for yeah. your books. Do you try to keep the word awesome in there? Do you oh. do you find a Japanese version of it that kind of Can works? I show you some covers? <laughs> okay. okay, okay, ready? Read, feel, smile. <laughs> okay, so, so explain this to me. I so, can't explain it, I have no idea. Oh, okay, but, 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 here's I mean, the ones you, that you're okay, talking Amazon. about. Amazon.com, you got some bestseller there, obviously. Yeah. But you, if I look at, this is what? This I is know. this? Yeah. So this is this. Yeah. So it's, it's two kids looking out a window with their dogs. That's right. Feels totally different than, <laughs> than so but uh, does this bother you? Is How about it, this one? This is, this is uh, I think this is Mandarin. Okay, but that's closer. There you go, they got the logo. Like, that one's Thai, I think. Right, so close, right? that's so super that, close. And that's what most of them did. Right. Most of them copied the black and the rainbow. Right. So, but you can see, like this one's um, Arabic. Okay. Happiest equation. Yeah, it's so close. Keep, right? They kept that happy face that you But made. then many of them go <laughs> totally wildly different. Like that's... Right, right. right. It looks like Amazon logo a little there. That one doesn't... That looks like a textbook. Yeah. What you language know? is that? Don't know. Okay. Can't guess because I'd get it wrong and be embarrassed. Happiness equation. Yeah, totally off. But, yeah. but, but is, it, is it the right call? Is it the wrong call? Is it what... I have no idea. Okay. The thing about foreign rights is you really just don't know. I mean, communication's right. pretty small between... Like I don't, I, I get a note in my email box saying yeah. like you sold a foreign right and I, I say woohoo and I buy myself a nice dinner and I get some copies mailed to me right. months later but I, it's hard to really know. Once in a while a publisher will get on the phone and say, hey, um, do you want to come down to Brazil? And I'll be like, sure. And then I won't or right. it just doesn't happen or I do a couple radio interviews. Right. But it's not, it doesn't turn into anything big. Right. So, so just to summarize. Yeah. First thing is it has to be ownable. Grab a word, a phrase, a color, a size, a shape, something unique to you, okay? Right? Then it's gotta be giftable. Mm -hmm. A high percentage of books are sold as gifts. Is it something that I would be proud to buy for somebody else? I would be proud to give to somebody else? It says something about me or our relationship as, as I exchange it. And third thing is searchable, findable. Can people in the enter your category locate you yeah you know that could also that speaks to the search terminology of it right so when you type it into amazon or whatever you you can find it it comes up that's big you know that might be a mistake for this one because there's a lot of books that probably have a very similar title and format hmm. so we have to differentiate somehow maybe that's with our logo but the world's too big right. not to take these three principles seriously so so let's workshop it a bit i'll be selfish and hopefully people can learn from it too so if I'm writing a book on, obviously believe is my yep. thing, I own it, yep. it's what people know me for, I'm the believe guy. If I'm writing a book on, on purpose, the process I go through is what I call who, why, how. You figure out who, your most important one word, your core value, why, your purpose comes from your pain, why you do what you do, and then the how is how you're gonna go out and execute it. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm doing a book around that, how should I incorporate those elements together? Well, the thing you shouldn't do, yeah. and this is what happens a lot, is somebody with an extremely popular podcast mm -hmm. or an extremely popular YouTube channel or an extremely popular Instagram feed mm -hmm. does a book and they change the name. 
This is very common. I just told you we were going to call this thing the other side of the pillow. Right. My blog's called A Thousand Awesome Things. Right, right. We went all the way to the finish line with the other side of the pillow as the title. We right. made a cover. Yeah. And I won't use friends of mine as examples, but most of them do this. Mm -hmm. A guy who didn't do that is Humans of New York. Right. The channel's called Humans of New York. The book's called Humans of New York. It's our instinct as people to fudge with stuff too much. Mm -hmm. We want to change it. We want to mess it around. We want to make it better or different. No, if you have a popular podcast, use that title. Use that logo. Use that branding. You have a popular YouTube channel, you already have a popular title, logo, and branding. If people know you as Evan Carmichael or as the Believe Guy, great. But if they're like, if I say, oh yeah, you know Evan's channel? They're like, what's one's that? I'm like, you know the guy that does like 10 rules, like, you know, 10 leadership lessons from Steve Jobs? And then people are like, oh yeah. And they can picture the, the logo and they can, now they know it. Because mm -hmm. people don't, at least in my opinion, I'm, I'm a step removed from your world, so yeah, yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. I don't know any YouTube channels. I just know videos that I've watched and I've liked and then I click something, right? Like I don't have a personal connection with too many uh, other than some friends. And so I would need, the ex in order for my brain to catch it in a bookstore, I need the exact same color, the exact same title, the exact same image that I see on the front page of that channel has to be right on that front of that book. Okay. Otherwise, I cannot make that leap. Okay. And maybe we did, you know, here we go, I'm making leaps here. Yeah. That's a harder one to do. That's why this word awesome is on six of my book covers. And I, I probably won't use happiness again because I, I can't own it. Right. It's harder to gift. It's harder to find. Intentional. I, I learned the lesson. That's why I'm teaching you this thing because it's like I learned it the hard way. Cool. So once again, this is a 10-part series on how to sell a million plus books with Neil Pasricha. Coming up next is part six, plant the launch seeds. Go watch the video right there. Continue to believe and we'll see you there.